Welcome back to Movie Mo Show. Today we are going to review the horror film, Demon. If you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe. We post multiple times daily. Spoilers ahead. The only other person on board is Peter, a Londoner who is transitioning into Pyotr since he is there to wed his Polish fiancée, Zanetta, and formally join the family feud, literally, as we will later find. He is greeted by his BFF and brother-in-law, Jasny, who calls him Python. The wedding, however, quickly goes awry as Python begins to act in an increasingly unusual manner, endangering the reception after a ceremony in which torrential rain replaced flowing rice and castigating drops fell onto the newlyweds. Poor Omen. The second act of Rona begins to take shape when Python is moved to confess what is happening to him because he is making for a very unsettling groom, at first taken to be someone who can't hold their liquor, and the metaphor begins to develop into a recurring theme in Polish art, and Polish nationalism, the parasitic relationship between repression and denial. While his father and brother-in-law, the latter of whom is still seeking parental approval, don't want their guests to know, Peter doesn't want to ruin Zanetta's day. One worries about his loved one's safety, while the others are afraid of the reputational damage that will undoubtedly result from rumors spread by the community. Both hosts are shocked to learn of a potential murder the father's grandpa may have committed, but it is the ghost's plan to crash this wedding, with the added grievance that she is Jewish, that truly astounds them. But the danger doesn't come from above, it originates underground. Python finds himself visiting the state that Zanetta will soon inherit from her grandfather, and he decides to spend the night before his wedding there after being warmly received by his well-to-do father-in-law in what appears to be an area the family will soon develop with the young son-in-law very much seconding the helm. He discovers what appears to be the bones of a person buried in the dirt there as he plays with the bulldozer and reappears. The remains are quite old, but they are unmistakably human. His natural tendency is to bury them back, which will draw him within the hole and gradually take control of his entire body. He is acting like a nervous groom at the threshold of his wedding day. In fact, the skeletons in the closet of the family Peter is going to join are actually in their garden. The fact that the wedding reception would be held there, in the backyard that hours earlier buried him as the overnight rain turned it into a swamp and the quicksand made up the nightmare from which he will never awaken, is the icing on top of his wedding day. So the wedding day arrives, and the ghost of a Jewish woman, possibly a bride, uses the occasion to take over the groom and ruin the festivities for everyone in attendance. The home and the land were simply there, much like how a state is. They were never really built. It should be recalled that before someone claimed it, the land was idle, just sitting there doing nothing. As a result, they now have the right to exploit it, to make it productive. Isn't this how patriotisms are developed and nations are built? In the interim, some graves must be buried because battles will be fought to defend this location. To make a piece of land productive, some ghosts must be produced. That is the main business of history. But when two souls share the same body or country, just as two thoughts share Peter, Pyotr, Python's body, one of them must win out and the other must perish or be banished or chased away or disappear. In this instance, maintaining appearances for visitors and neighbors is of utmost importance for those who have staked claim to the land. This includes re-digging any graves that were flooded by the rains, covering them with muck and soil, and locking away the annoyance in a cellar or somewhere else underground and out of sight of visitors. To avoid drawing attention to any potential traces of shame in what was done. The Polish shame, which persists decades after the Holocaust, is still the demon because it involves cooperation, if not actual activity, in the eradication of unpleasant neighbors and the claim of unclaimed territory. And Rona, a creative with his own demons, possibly an abusive father, a rumored street exorcist, and a domestic devil, gets to ask, how to move on from such disgrace in the 21st century, in a civilized society. It can, will, be labeled a healthcare issue, most likely a mental one, but never a systemic one, right, NRA? Right, a mental illness that transforms shame into fear which is then transformed into fury, wherein fear is redirected to others, or fatally turned against oneself. Rona adjourns. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.